I first visited Kart Track Chroma in the summer of 2019 for an arrive and drive session and loved the place immediately. At the start of 2020 I joined their youth club and junior league which has fulfilled in my itch to race and compete. While for many this is just a higher karting championship, for me it's been so much more. It's allowed me to compete in the sport I love and a sport that due to its immense financial commitment is often not accessible. Over my four years here I've achieved everything I've wanted to. Had some great battles, learned an incredible amount, but I've reached my final Junior League race. While the purpose of my YouTube channel is to build a portfolio of my commentary and interviewing, this video may, is mainly something for me to look back on in the future to remind me of my time racing at Kart Track Chroma. Heading into qualifying then, and to be honest, this evening as a whole, I had no real pressure on myself. This season I'm really pleased with how things have gone. This year, um, apart from this round, they've ran an A and a B final. Now, I may have been in the B final in every round, but I'm very pleased to, to have been on the podium for every other round with, with two race wins. So, for me, it, that means a lot. So, coming into this final round this evening, it was all about just taking it all in, enjoying some battles and rounding off what has been an amazing three and a half years um, with Kart Track Chroma. So qualifying is always fast, it's always frantic. The grid got split up actually into two groups, so we had a bit more space with each other. Um, but heading through the chicane there, um, just trying to get a lap in. We've all got plenty of space, but already the checkered flag's out and Matt is qualifying over and done with. And our attention immediately turns to the first group. Lining up on the grid then for heat one, starting fifth, so right in the middle of the pack, and like I said, main priority, have some fun. Main priority right now is getting in our grid slot. That was always a scare of mine. But the Marshall's back, it is close. And the green flag's away. We make uh, we make an okay start. We, we pull to the right-hand side to, to defend our, our position. So it's, it's not a too bad start off the line. We all make it through turn one, which is good. It all does get a bit bunched up there at Dunlop. A corner for many a joke has been made about me over the years as I've... I've gone deep, deep there many times, but we all we all follow follow each other through on this first lap. Obviously, quite a, quite a tight circuit round here at Chroma at times. A very short one. You get get round here in the low 30 seconds. Um, as someone goes deep there, so we we slip through and we actually get up to fourth. Um, following through through the infield section here, we've just cut to. So yeah, we, we come through the chicane, everyone Constantine is up a little bit through there, obviously it's the slowest corner on the track and also the best opportunity to overtake. So through Dunlop, chasing down the top three, um, and so far pretty, pretty pleased with pace, um, but most of all just having a bit of fun with it, um, seeing if we can come find a way through. At this point as a, as a driver, and all drivers will know, you're just trying to assess where you're quick, um, where the driver ahead is quick. Um, but do I say even more importantly where they're slow, where you can pound someone, where you can make an opportunity little look back there um, and you can see me signalling um, that's the uh, racing driver I suppose universal signal to don't attack me, I'm busy attacking the cart in front um, does it always work? no, but we, we do it anyway it's like in, in like the likes of British Touring Cars or British GT when drivers flash their lights to put, to put the driver up ahead off, does it work? Uh, maybe sometimes, but anyway, we head out of the silken hairpin and dive into the chicane again. The top two are battling a little bit, but not quite enough for any of us to then be opportunistic and, and have a go on them either. So, um, yeah, we can't really do anything here as we dive into Dunlop again. Um, pretty, pretty close. I can see now the top two are starting to get away a little bit um, through infield one, which is a really quick corner been into infield two maybe a corner we're losing a bit of time with here um, as you probably saw on the time lapse at the start of the video during the day it was it was all just a little dive up the inside there and a dive up the inside there I lose out lose another place but we live to fight another day um, and onto the back straight we go uh, through the chicane but as I was saying through the day the weather was really mixed 
there was points where it rained quite hard, but then the sun did come out at a point. So by this point, the tracks, the tracks, the, the tracks dry, um, but perhaps not quite as much grip as there usually is on on a really nice hot sunny day. Um, it was quite muggy, but obviously we did literally just as everyone was arriving, we did have a little bit of rain. Um, so that always always makes it quite exciting, doesn't it? So um, especially in higher karting, actually, when you're on slicks and. That's something I'm super, super grateful for um, as we go through the chicane there is obviously, like I said, I've learned so much here um, and it's it's super valuable learning um, to race a car on slick tyres in the wet. Um, you'll learn so much more. So for anyone that criticises higher karting um, compared to doing it in, in your own machinery or whatever, you, you learn so much. And comparing myself now as a driver from from when I first started, you, you just can't compare. So, a little battle going on up ahead of us. Um, change the third, we're trying to, to follow through here, but nothing we can really do. Little look back and go defensive, we go to the middle of the road, um, but nothing we can really do there. Maybe could have gone for a bit of a dive, but perhaps not quite close enough there um, to go up the inside, really. So, we uh, we've, we sit we sit sit tight for now. Um, we, we, we're a way through but nothing we can really do like I said. Um, through in for one, through in for two, um, keeping on the back of the cart up ahead of us. Meanwhile the top two are getting away, while well, they have had a bit of a battle throughout this race for the most part they are helping helping each other out um, and once again we all kind of team up a little bit through the chicane. Um, jumping a little bit further forward then we close heading into the corner but we have a bit of a moment and I can see on the inside there's a cart on the inside we go to the outside um, and he dives up the inside of us <laughs> um, I did think I didn't know whether uh, he was, he was going to get that stop there but he did just about, it was a good move fair play to him um, um, so yeah we lose another place down to the fifth uh, and meanwhile the top three have sort of closed up again now haven't they? so while the top two did start getting away, um, it has closed up again and what I love about Kart Track Chrome, despite being such a short circuit, and like I said, it it can be quite difficult to overtake round. The chicane um, is the best best corner to overtake round. It does provide close racing. But coming out of the chicane and the final corner, checkered flags out, and after all those laps of racing, everyone's still pretty close together. Um, and I finished sixth from that first race. So good fun, solid start to the evening, um, and that's one race down. Arriving on the grid then for heat two, it's actually a reverse grid, so we're starting a little bit higher up on on the grid here, um, and the green flag is go, and we make we make a pretty good start. Um, we're on, in my opinion, the third side of the circuit now. I'm trying, I'm thinking about making it three wide, but I know that's not a good idea. Space is always going to run out, so we have the inside line, a bit of battling between the carts for the second and third vet, allow us to slip up to third. Um, now I know at this point we need to try and work together. Um, to get away. By this point I'm now starting to get into a bit of a rhythm after the, the busyness of the opening few corners um, as we dive into the chicane there. In the mi middle of the road a little bit so we can defend a little bit but also carry as much speed as possible out of the corner because it's one of those things, especially in karting, as soon as you start defending you're going to start losing time um, and coming under even more pressure than just sort of pushing ahead and trying to pull away. So we're on the attack pretty much immediately as we go through infield one and then infield two there, although we slide deep as we get a bit of a hit from behind there, um, but no harm done. Um, he has a little look, but we hold on. Um, and I think even if the driver had have gone through, we, we probably would have been able to hop, have, have a go back again. Um, go a little bit through, uh, deep through the chicane. Um, if the top two have started to get away after that little bit of a bit of a battle with the cart behind me. Um, but already we're starting to, to aim to close in again as we go through Dunlop um, and I'm just judging to see if I can tell who's quicker out of the top two actually um, to see if there's going to be any sort of battle there that we can, can make use of um, as, we, as we head through the Silken Hairpin. A corner to be honest all this evening I'd, I'd struggled through to be honest at times. One, one I do often enjoy, enjoy driving um, especially because it's so fast considering it's you know, I suppose a hairpin so um, so yeah, it was one we sort of struggled on, um, but I would say it's a super important corner for the lap because it sets you up as you head down uh, the straight um, and then obviously into the chicane, which is like I said, 
the best overtaking opportunity on the circuit. That's another corner I sort of struggled on throughout the evening being infield too. Just oversteering a little bit, um, but that might have been the slight lack of grip um, with the rain. Not, I'm not saying it was wet or greasy or whatever, but maybe there just wasn't quite as much. We carry a good amount of speeds through the chicane, and I know that we could be looking to make a move for second place here, right on the rear of the car up ahead of us. Um, and the aim here is to try and get past as quickly as possible. But the thing is, the complete opposite happened. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't find a way through. I've always tried to not just overtake at the chicane. Like I said, it is the best place, but obviously it's the most predictable. So people are always going to be able to you know, cover the inside and defend from you. And it's not a good idea to try and go go around the outside whatsoever. But coming out of the first corner, foot to the floor, diving into Dunlop, we're nose to tail the top three. We're all super close together. And once again, the Junior League providing great racing, almost side by side for Infield 1. That's always a bit of an exciting one. Um, as long as you're on the inside, of course. You don't really want to be on the outside as you're at risk of getting hung out to dry. But through the hairpin again, I'm very aware that as much as this is a fun battle, and I am loving it at this point because this is how I wanted to go out, really, um, at the Junior League, I know the carts behind us are probably closing in quite quickly, um, and we've got to be aware of that. But through, through Dunlop, we look to the inside here, we get alongside, but we're going to be on the wrong side of the circuit anyway, um, but we can't actually hold on, on to being alongside him, we, we lose out. So we live to fight another day, luckily we don't, we don't get forced that wide or anything, but we can't quite make the move. Bit of slow through the hairpin there, but given a bit, bit, a bit of breathing space, we'll save that anyway. Um, but through the chicane, we go again, nothing we can do really there, it's now building up. Um, and looking for when we can make another move. I've, I've sort of noticed by this point we're closing in, coming out of the chicane. We're prioritising our exits more than our entry or, or mid part of the corner speed. We're prioritising our speed out of the chicane because, like I said, similar to the hairpin actually, it's super important to get a good exit out of there because then you've got quite a long straight or quite a long amount of track where you're, you're flat out. We try and get alongside coming out of the hairpin, but just our exit's not good enough. Once again, right on his tail, going into Dunlop, looks one way, looks the other, go to the inside, but it's going to be a repeat of last time. We get more of the cart alongside, we go to the outside, we go for the switch back, we put our nose up the inside, it's going to tight, and of course, that door's going to shut. A bit of leaning on each other, we stick to the outside, but we can't quite hold on. It was a good attempt, we looked to the inside there again, but we can't quite do it. We just need to prioritise the exit of the hairpin a little bit more, but that's sort of where we've been struggling a little bit. Good exit out of there, but over the next few laps we start to drop back we go a bit defensive here but we lose out another cart catches us napping there and dives down the inside but at this point as the number eight cart follows um, or goes through we look to look to follow him through to see if he can have a go at second place and I can be opportunistic and slip through as well it's a bit of an unfortunate one this race because if I'm being honest it was it was brilliant fun and I love those kind of races where I know I, the pace was pretty good, um, and I, I loved having the battle. Um, and I, you know, like I said, I love having the races where I'm just constantly trying to go through. We go a bit defensive there, but even still, we lose out on the inside there. Um, but it was a slightly bit dis disappointed. We couldn't get through because the key to a race like this, a reverse grid race, is getting a good start, which which we did. We had a solid start, but then maximising that and then being able to move forward and then separating yourself from carts further back that are then coming through the field forward. Um, but nonetheless, it was it's just one of those things. Sometimes these kind of things work out to your favour. We have a big moment through the hairpin. Um, but some, sometimes they work out. Sometimes you can make progress really quickly and move forward. Um, but other times, it's, it's not meant to be. And in this case, we couldn't quite do it. And you, as you can see, as we cut forward there, the gap has really opened up. We've checked the flags out. we finished fifth. And to be honest, a really enjoyable race. Like I said, not a result to be, you know, writing home about or shouting about, but even still, one I enjoyed, and that leaves us with just the final. Heading out then on the track for the final of the evening, and of course my final race in the Junior League. Um, just making sure everything's all good as we hop in the cart. And now as we head out of the pit lane and onto the track, um, starting a bit further back than we would have liked, but like I said, I've had a brilliant season, I've loved every part of it. Obviously this final was slightly different as it was just one final um, instead of two, 
but we look to get going we our eyes are on the flag and we make a good start off the line really good launch we look for a place to go we just find a way through and to be honest this is where things sort of go a bit wrong we make contact on the inside with a driver and by this point I feel awful obviously it was just one of those things and not intentional and I you know accept full responsibility for the incident so by this point I'm trying to work out obviously you can see him just getting out of the tyre barrier there on the left hand side of your screen there very briefly I'm w wondering if we're going to go to yellows as well you can see I slow down a little bit there and obviously get absolutely caught napping um, as a cart flies through on the inside there um, I'm just trying to work out sort of how the rest of the race is going to go um, but like I said I should accept full responsibility and not how I would have liked um, the start to go but we made a great launch off the line and for me at this point we know and we've sort of accepted a, a podium or a, even a top five result perhaps off the cards at this point um, so it was just about having some fun having a bit of a battle enjoying my last few laps on the track uh, in the junior league um, and just assessing the race as it goes along. Um, more on that later. Um, so you can see things have opened up a bit, even when when Karts had a bit of a slower corner there. Um, we've not really closed in, coming under a bit of pressure from the cart up the inside of the hairpin there. Um, there's battles going on up and down all the field. It's ironic to be honest, because this is the most spread out actually of all the all the races of the evening. Um, race one and two, there was really long trains of carts all bump drafting each other. And you know what? It, it, a great evening of racing so once again fair play to car track chroma um, for everything all, all you know all the races they've organized this year because they've got a lot of effort into um, organizing these kind of events um, so we lose a place there at the chicane um, and yeah therefore drop down another place nothing we could really do about it um, but it was just one of those things and like i said we just sort of slotting behind but i can see already we've dropped back from the carts behind um, see now here I'm, I'm looking around and I'm very much a believer and something I've been taught over the years to you know not look look around too much don't look behind you just look forward you'll go quicker and the reason for this is now the cop that's directly behind me is the one I made contact with um, on the opening lap and essentially ruined um, his race I've just seen there I believe the marshal um, there he's now moving over to the start finish line um, with the checker flag to signal the end of the race so this is my final lap in the junior league um, as I said earlier in, in the race, there wasn't you know, the opportunity of getting a podium or a top five was off the table, so we start to back off. You could see me pointing at the driver I made contact with, so I'd made the decision by this point to slow down and let him through. Now, not only was this due to the fact that, you know, like I said, essentially ruined his race, but also he's doing the rest of the season. The points are far more valuable in his hands, so I let him through. Going across the line, not a standout result, by far our weakest result of the whole season, but I felt I did the right thing there, and I would, it, you know, that's how it should have been. Um, so once again, I, I apologise for the, uh, the lap one shenanigans, but that is the end of the evening, and of course my season and time in the Kart Track Roma Junior League, a nice little celebration, um, could have done with it being a bit more wet and greasy though, to make it a bit more worthwhile with the, the sliding there. Um, but I'm just taking it nice and slow, just ch cherishing, taking it all in. Once again, like I said, it wasn't wasn't a standout result. I would have rather to be a few more places up the road um, or stood on that podium again. But I was happy with how things gone, how, how things went. As we pull in the pit lane again, it was great to see my family and friends all there in the pit lane watching over um, as I as I pull in. Only you would think about doing that for like for kick, not finishing the championship, giving people extra points. Okay. Yeah. Only you would think about that. Fair play. Thank you. Well, I had contact with him at the start, and yeah. you know, it's just getting back. On. There's a lot. Yeah. Look, I've been on the podium every race this year, yeah. and done well. yeah. well. coming what eighth instead of ninth at this point yeah. doesn't really mean anything. No. So. No. You stand on my coffee table whenever you like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So to conclude, while it was quite an up and down evening of racing for me for my final round, I did really enjoy myself. I've had a brilliant time at the track in their junior league and it goes without saying, if you haven't already given Kart Track Chroma a follow on all their social medias, make sure you go and do that. I'll leave all the links you need in the description below. Likewise with Jack, 
He's the driver, coach, and track manager there. Now, you, if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you'll probably recognise him from my coverage and interviews from the British Supercarts, where he's racing this season in the Division 1 class. We'll be catching up with him next month when the championship comes to Snetterton. And likewise, if you don't already, go give him a follow, go give him a subscribe on his YouTube channel. He does great things, content from the kart track, as well as lots of onboard footage from his amazing supercar um, racing, which if you've not seen already, go and have a look. It's, it's proper crazy, um, and full respect to him. Um, and obviously, if you ever need any driver coaching, he's the man you need to speak to, because if it wasn't for him, I'd be nowhere where I am today. So thank you very much to all of them. And of course, if you are ever in the Norfolk area, make sure you do, do go and visit the car track. You can book arrive and drive sessions on their website. They do great things and you'll be properly looked after there. It's a great circuit. Um, so that's my time of the Junior League um, at Car Track Chroma over and done with. I've loved every second of it. You, you know, I've, like I said, it's been so much more to me than just another higher karting championship. It's allowed me to race. It's allowed me to compete. It's allowed me to learn, um, which, which is the main thing I wanted to do. I wanted to you know, get good at karting. I wanted it to be more than just a, a fun activity to do in the summer holidays, you know. So I'm massively proud to be leaving with several race wins, lots of podiums, a few fastest laps, and most importantly, a smile on my face.